Hi there, Year 11. In this video, we're going to look at gas exchange in animals. Now, gas exchange is really important for all living organisms. All organisms need to be able to get oxygen in to their bodies and carbon dioxide out of their bodies. So this is really important for cellular respiration to occur. And all living organisms undergo cellular respiration, even plants. Cellular respiration, in essence, is taking the glucose or the sugars that we get either through photosynthesis or through eating organisms that do photosynthesis. We combine that with oxygen and we convert it into ATP or adenosine triphosphate, which is a really highly efficient way of producing energy for our biochemistry to work. The byproduct of that is carbon dioxide and water. Carbon dioxide in high levels will turn things acidic. So living organisms have to have a way of getting rid of that carbon dioxide as a byproduct of cellular respiration. Now, you need to also remember and understand diffusion if you're going to understand how gas exchange occurs. So diffusion is the exchange across a membrane um, or gas exchange across a membrane. It has to be across a moist membrane as well. And it goes um, down the concentration gradient. So the whole idea is that when you breathe in, into this is an alveoli here you're putting a lot of oxygen in this area here and there's not a lot of oxygen in this blue part of the blood this is what we call deoxygenated blood and so through diffusion that oxygen is going to diffuse across the cell membrane and the carbon dioxide that's in the blood here is going to diffuse out into the alveoli so when you breathe out the carbon dioxide will go out and the oxygen goes into the blood and that's the basic process of gas exchange in pretty much all uh, animals so the oxygen dissolves into that layer of extracellular fluid that's why we need to have a watery or a moist environment for this exchange to occur the oxygen itself the gas particles dissolve into that fluid now, small packages of oxygen and carbon dioxide, when they're dissolved in that fluid, can pass straight across the cellular membrane as well. So it's a highly efficient way of this gas exchange to occur, as long as we have the right conditions for it to happen. Now, for efficiency, any part of your body or any part of any organism's body that is involved in uh, gas exchange generally have a large surface area. And they'll also have a fairly thin barrier for the gases to cross over as well. We can see here in this picture here of the axolotl, they've got their gills on the outside, but you can see all of these little sort of hair-like projections that are all there to increase the surface area so that they can get as much oxygen out of their water environment as they possibly can. Now, large surface area, thin barrier to cross means an adequate supply of gas can be transferred into the organism and out of the organism in the case of carbon dioxide. Now, oxygen needs to be carried away after diffusion. And this is really important because it's what helps maintain that high concentration gradient across the membrane. If you think, the, uh, if you think of that picture before with the alveoli and the um, uh, capillary, if the blood wasn't flowing, it would reach a balance or a stable point fairly quickly if it was just relying on diffusion, where the oxygen in the alveoli would diffuse across into the blood, and if that blood's not moving, it would reach that equilibrium point fairly quickly. But the fact that blood is moving, so the oxygenated blood moves away and the deoxygenated blood comes in, means there's always going to be that concentration gradient, which is going to help the uh, oxygen pass in and the carbon dioxide pass out. So this is a, a graphic showing breathing and showing this process here. Now, the red represents carbon dioxide and the yellow represents oxygen. So if we look on the left-hand side here, we've got our person breathing. You can see their diaphragm contracting here, which pulls the air into the lungs. But this is the important bit here. This is the alveoli, and these are all the capillaries that are outside and surrounding the alveoli. And so what's happening is the oxygen is being breathed in, these capillaries have blood flow, which you can see through here. And so what happens is that concentration gradient that's caused from the movement of the blood means that oxygen is able to diffuse into the capillaries and then be carried away. And then what would be coming in through here would be the deoxygenated blood where the carbon dioxide can leave and then allows room for the oxygen to be taken up inside the blood. Now, this is a picture from your textbook, but it's again explaining that same kind of idea. We have our lung, 
alveoli with the capillaries and if we look at the individual parts of the alveoli we can see again this passage if that blood is not moving then that diffusion is going to meet a pretty stable point very quickly and we're not going to be able to get much gas exchange at all so that movement is really crucial now let's look at fish and how fish breathe so fish are aquatic animals but aquatic animals also need to exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide now we mentioned before oxygen and carbon dioxide can dissolve into watery environments or those moist surfaces in the lungs and fish live in that water environment but the gases in or the gases in uh water generally have a lower solubility than they do in the air and so what fish have adapted to have are these gills and the gills are designed to extract the maximum amount of oxygen out of the water as is possible I mentioned before surface area is really important for this and again this is a picture here of an axolotl and their external gills where we can see really thin projections which would mean a really high surface area compared to their volume so it's going to maximize that surface area for where gas exchange can occur now when fish breathe or when they're swimming they have these mechanisms to ensure that water is flowing across their gills all the time so they take water in through their mouth like we would take oxygen or air in through our mouths and then that water is passed through as the fish kind of closes its mouth and what will happen is then that water will pass across the gill filaments or the gill arches here as well now usually that water will exit out the side of the the fish's head um, through the uh, the uh, copernicum and so what again is trying to happen here is we have these fairly large surface area to volume gill filaments and water is passing across that constantly as the fish is sucking in this water and then uh, pushing it across the gills out the side of its head now fish need to have counter current flow to help maintain that diffusion gradient so similar to humans where we have the capillaries pushing the blood across so it's always redrawing the oxygen in the carbon dioxide out fish have a system where the the water is going to flow across their gills in one direction and the blood is going to flow through their gills in the opposite direction so it's similar to what we have in humans but we call it counter current because it is one water water uh, moving one way and blood moving the other way but that movement, that counter current maintains that diffusion gradient. All right, let's look now at insects. And insects are really interesting because depending on the size of the insect, a lot of this gas exchange happens quite passively. Now you can see here in this caterpillar, these sort of eye-like structures on the side here, these are called spiracles. And spiracles work a little bit like windows in a room, where if you want to get oxygen into a room, you just open the windows you don't need to do anything else just the mere fact of opening the windows is enough to get oxygen to start to flow into that room this is a close-up picture here of what these spiracles look like and you can see they've got these sort of slits over the top of them so they will open and close rhythmically and that will allow oxygen to make its way in and carbon dioxide to make its way out now, if we compare insects to humans, humans have a cardiovascular system, and that cardiovascular system is pumping the oxygen around our body to all of the cells in our body. Now, insects don't have this type of a system, so they rely on a more passive diffusion process like that opening the window. Now, oxygen will wander into the insect through the spiracles, and it'll make its way through the body to the innermost cells. So humans and mammals, they have a specific system to make sure that every cell in their body gets oxygen, whereas insects kind of have this passive system where the oxygen just kind of filters its way through and hopefully will make its way to the uh, cells that needs it. Now, Spiracles in the insect breathing system work similarly to opening the windows of a room, which I mentioned before, and the air will passively move in and out. But there are some insects that are a little bit too big for that uh, passive movement to occur. And so they might involve themselves with some movement of their thorax or movement of their legs, something to try and create these negative pressures that allows more oxygen to go through. And insects have adapted to survive in the environment we have with this limited oxygen availability. So this is not a very efficient way to breathe. And as a result, insects tend to be, on the whole, smaller than, say, mammals or other animals like that, even, even aquatic animals like fish. All right, so here again is a, a picture showing, this is from your textbook, showing the uh, carbon dioxide out, oxygen in through the spiracles on the side here, in this case of a grasshopper.
and that oxygen will wander its way down and be part or go into the insect muscle fibers there. And this is again a graphic showing this whole process happening again, similar to the one before where yellow is oxygen and red is carbon dioxide. So we have the oxygen diffusing its way in, it then goes through all of the air sacs into the tracheoles, um, which are sort of like the, uh, not quite the alveoli, but kind of the equivalent, I guess you could say, uh, where the blood is. And that allows for that um, uh, exchange of gas to occur, and then the carbon dioxide will be pushed out as well. All right, so let's go through a summary. So for gas exchange to occur, it needs to have a moist surface. In humans, it's the moisture inside of our lungs. In fish, they live in an aquatic environment, so they don't need to worry about maintaining that moist surface. And in insects, it's to do with the hemolymph that they have, which is their blood on the inside of their body. That provides the moist surface. You need to have a large surface area to volume to ensure maximum exchange of gases. And key points, mammals have lungs, so understanding how the lungs work. Fish have gills and insects have spiracles.